What's up YouTube? This is Jay from Encounter Wargaming and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a bunker. We're continuing on with our jungle terrain series. So far we've built uh, jungle trees, we've built the table, we've built a river for the table, and now we're going to finish it off with a couple of bunker pieces, a sandbag piece, and eventually a swamp, which you guys will see in the very last uh, episode of this series. If you want to see that video though, you're going to have to jump onto our Patreon. Check out the link in the description below. For a dollar a video, you get to check out that video as well as any of the other series we do in the on this channel. Uh, generally speaking, we'll make the last video for patrons only, just as a little thank you for those people that have decided to give back. Um, but anyway, getting to the point. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to build this sweet bunker. I'm also going to show you guys how I did the sandbags, and of course the trees and the foliage and stuff we've gone over in past videos. So I won't be covering that today, but if you want to check those out, go back to the beginning of this playlist, or check out the tree video, which I'm going to put right at the top there. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So to start off the bunker, what we're going to do is we're going to build our wall sections. Now, the bunker I showed you guys in the intro to this video was actually not the bunker we're going to be building today. It's a bunker I built beforehand. Um, I built that bunker as sort of a prototype, and now I'm going to build a second one, because the customer I requested two of these, as well as a third sandbag emplacement, which is just sandbags. So I'm going to be showing you guys in this video how to do the bunker, I'm going to show you guys how to do the sandbags, and then I'll show you guys it when it's all done. So uh, to start for the bunker, we're going to need the wall sections. Now, I decided on the, if you guys saw the little uh, slit along the front, um, I decided it to make it that big because I want pretty much any size model to be able to fire out of it. Obviously we have the new advent of Primaris Marines. Um, the front of the bunker I made just big enough that an Imperial Guardsman or a Space Marine could like shoot over it. But then of course the Primaris Marines are quite bigger. We have things like Ogrens and stuff like that which, you, which obviously you would want to put inside a bunker. Um, so I've decided on these heights based on the proportions of these models, whether it looks realistic or not. Uh, doesn't matter as much to me as it being practical for game purposes. As long as it looks cool and it works in the game, uh, that's what we're going for with terrain pieces. I mean, as much as you want them to look as realistic as possible, you also want to make them pragmatic. So, long story short, what I've done here is I've already cut some strips out of foam core. These are going to be my walls. So the back and side walls of our bunker, I've decided to make two inches high. So all I've done here is cut some strips at two inches. Uh, beforehand off camera just to save some time and then the very front of the bunker that sort of wraps around the front there I've decided to do one inch and basically that leaves just uh, the shoulders and the head of the Space Marine just above if I can grab Johnny here it just kind of leaves the shoulders and head just above the uh, front of it so they can see out fine like I say an Ogren sized model will be able to see out fine anyway that's it so we're going to start by cutting these into sections. Uh, basically, I want to build two wall sections on the sides, and then I want sort of a cut in and back as sort of an entranceway, and then of course we're going to use the one inch one as uh, tapered edges, and then going straight to the front. So we're going to build kind of like an octagon, um, with the back sides being more of a T-shape. Uh, so let's get cutting. <laughs> Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Oh, I'm very excited. We'll see all the sights just like that. Show you like on HBO. And if we're leaving, leaving tonight, tonight, I'll be right behind. Oh no. All right. Now that I've got all wall sections basically um, all these taller walls here are going to be just straight butt up against each other like that so I don't really have to worry too much about filling around with those but these pieces I intend to use for the front of the bunker I've decided to do on sort of that like octagon shape so what we're gonna have to do is since they have square edges is we're gonna have to just create a slight bevel on all of them uh, not really, actually, not all of them, just the very short ones, the corner ones that are going to go this way. 
because they're going to butt up against this guy, and they're also going to butt up against our tall, longer rolls. So that is really just as simple as taking my uh, piece here. I can even use the lines on my cutting mat as a guide. I want to line it up with my 45 line, uh, line the corners up with my straight square lines, and then just kind of saw straight down from the corner. Just like that. And if it's a little rough, guys, don't worry too much about it because we're going to be spackling and painting and all that stuff. So it doesn't have to be that pretty, but it does have to be a 45 to some degree. Pun, pun not intended. Doing the next side, so we're going to have to do both edges of both of these pieces because we're going to need it, like I say, to butt up not only against the very front wall here but we're also going to need it butt up against our sidewall there. As you can see that. And that'll be the front of our bunker. We're just going to do the same thing to this guy. Let's go, go. I'm very excited. We'll see all the sides just like that. Show you like on HBO. Yeah, that's all the pieces to our bunker. With the exception of the roof, obviously. And I'll show you guys that after, but for right now, we basically have all of our pieces right there for our bunker, and now it's time to put them together and put them on the template. All right, got all my pieces laid out here. Basically, I got my hot glue gun all heated up and ready to go. Now, the original plan was that these little two-inch guys that I cut, they're gonna be the back wall section, or the back entrance section, I should say. So why don't we start there? I'm gonna start by uh, throwing some hot glue on the very edge here. Now when you're working with foam core you might find that the hot glue will melt the foam core a little bit. Don't cry too much about that because basically we're going to be covering this these wall sections up afterwards with some spackles. So they're not going to look like foam core by the time we're done. If it melts a little tiny bit then I mean it's not the end of the world provided it sticks and it's sturdy. I want to make sure I get a pretty good right angle on there. I don't want to Put it all crooked. Let's go to blow. Let's go to blow. There you go, so there's our back entrance to the bunker. Let's put those aside for a second and build the front of our bunker. So I'm going to start by building that crazy octagon shape that we were talking about. So I got my little pieces here. Just gonna cover this in hot glue. Again, glob it on thick, guys, because it will melt the foam a little bit. And now that we've cut these 45s, you will find that that uh, distance there is quite a bit thicker than the normal 90 degree distance. But that's okay, because that's why we have this hot glue. It not only glues these things together, but it also provides us almost like a caulking type thing insides here. So again, using the lines on my cutting mat to line up the 45. And then while it's still wet, as you can see there, there's a nice big glob, and I'll just run my finger across it. After it's cooled down a little bit, guys, you can burn yourself with hot glue, so be careful. But just doing that, the difference in uh, width there is hidden. And I've got a nice 45 degree. Perfect. We're laughing. easy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on my big sides. So actually I want to put the glue on this guy. Don't put it along the whole edge of the four inch piece. Sorry, of the two inch tall piece because uh, you'll end up getting glue where you don't want it. So on this one I'm just going to try and get a nice 90 on this guy. Again, trying to use squares that I could actually see. There we go. Move that guy up like so. The great thing about hot glue is that it tacks pretty much instantly. I mean, not completely instantly, but within a few seconds, which is awesome. So it allows me to build things like this very, very quickly. 
to move it around too much until it's actually dried. And look at that, I've got it a little stuck to my cutting mat. That's okay. Let's get that and it's off. Boom! One side. Let's do the next side. Third verse. And that's looking pretty hot so far, if I do say so. Again, hot glue squeezed out, stuck to my cutting mat. That's fine. There we go three of the four walls, and then we're going to throw on the back pieces to complete the shape. And just like before, now normally I would put it on this wall, but since that thing is so big and kind of flimsy, I'm just going to put it along here. Sorry, I'm doing that off camera. Put it along here, since this is a lot easier to handle. And again, using the lines on my cutting mat to maintain Squareness. Line that up with that line. Line this up with this line. Laughing. Just making sure my outside corner is flush. Because if it's not, it's not In fact, if it's not, I mean, like I said, we are just gonna spackle over this later because we don't want it to look like foam core. We want it to look like concrete. So right now. If it is a little bit off, I mean, I can hide that later, but I'd rather do it right the first time. It's just how I roll. Okay, that's nice and hard. Move on to the next one. Same dealio. Let's go alone. We'll see all the sides just like that show you like on HBO. How's that for a sweet bunker? So now going to do is we're going to attach it to our template. So I have here a template I've already put aside for this bunker and as you can see, I'll zoom out a bit for you guys, as you can see I've already attached the trees here just like we did in the tree video earlier in the series. Once again go back to the beginning of the playlist or check out that one video if you'd like uh, if you haven't watched it already. I'm not going to go over that again but I did it beforehand because it pretty much needs to be done before I start laying down my spackle and all that garbage. So, right now, we're just gluing this bunker into place. And for this one, the other one I put it off to one side. I think with this one, I want to make it a little different than the other. I mean, we want to keep them somewhat uniform because the point of having two of them was that, you know, each player gets one kind of idea. Um, but we don't want to make them two of exactly the same piece. I mean, that would just be boring, right? So this one, I think I'm going to put more in the center of this uh, ground template and I think that looks pretty good right there and the easiest way to do this is just to take our hot glue and we're going to run it all the way along the edge Be real careful that I keep these walls relatively square, at least square enough to the eye. So that way, when it is finally finished, the proportions don't look all weird and stuff. So, a good thing, like I said, about hot glue is that it dries very quickly, but it also gives me just a little bit of time to kind of move these around a little bit and adjust them. And I'm just eyeing it up, guys. I mean, you don't have to be incredibly precise, but. You also don't want it to be all wonky. And luckily for me, I'm pretty good at seeing when things are not square. Just by ironing it up. So right there, that wall is just a little bit off. Uh, and my hot glue is dry. So that's pretty much all that's going to be uh, done with that one. And there it is. Super easy. Um, all I'm going to do now is measure the outside of this shape. And then cut that out of foam core. And that will act as our roof. Alright, so I've got a piece cut just slightly bigger than the outline of the bunker and I'm fi I find that the easiest way to figure out the dimensions of this roof, since you know we might be off a little tiny bit as far as square, as far as distance, is just to take a piece that's just a little bit bigger and just trace from underneath. It's really that simple. I'm just going to draw a bunch of pencil lines underneath just so I know exactly where the walls are because we want the edges of this uh, roof to be flush with the outside 
of our magnificent bow here. here. Now the hard part you're going to get into when tracing like this is this part here. So more or less what I, what I do is I mark the corner here where the actual wall starts. Mark the corner here. So just to show you guys properly, I've got, I got, you can't really see it on the black, but I've got my two marks for where these two corners are. And then I've cut this the exact length of the bunker from back door to front. Now what I'm gonna do is find the width of this, which I believe was three, which it was. So now I'm gonna go to the center of this piece, which should be the shy three. This is what? And uh, then we're gonna go an inch and a half from the center point. Out this way, an inch and a half out this way, and that'll give us our front three inch. Uh, now that I've got those parts drawn out, I can actually just draw a line with a ruler from corner to corner here, mark to mark I should say, just like that, same thing over here, put that going there, bam, draw that line. Even though it's hard for you guys to see the pencil, that is going to be the shape of our roof. You can kind of see it when I glimmer in the light like that. So now I'm just going to cut this out. There it is. That's our roof. It was really that easy. Oh, backwards. There we go. There's our sweet little foam core bunker. So now, we get to make it actually look like a bunker. Just realized I forgot to mention one thing to you guys. Once we have this built, the point of this back entrance is that there's we want this bunker to actually appear like it's underground somewhat. And of course, the only way to do that is to build up around the bunker. With this back entrance, we don't want it just straight walk in. We need it to be able to step down into the bunker. I mean, give it sort of the appearance that it's underground. Now these pieces here, were the pieces that I cut out from the sides of the roof here. They're actually going to be perfect. They're pretty much a perfect fit to fit inside there. And as you can see from above, they pretty much go the depth of that. So all I'm going to do is cut, leave one of them full size, cut the other one in half like this, and stagger it so that they appear to be steps. And I think two steps would probably be fine. I might add a third, but we'll see. So right now, I think I just want two, because it's only a two inch uh, entrance, and a 24 millimeter or 25 millimeter base is basically an inch. So this one here, what I think I'm going to do is actually measure, since it is two inches, I'll actually measure where the one inch mark is. Might as well do it properly. Don't want to just tie up everything and then line it up with my cutting mat lines right so and blam them now that i got those cut i'm just going to take my hot glue gun put a nice bead along the bottom of the big one put it in make it straight as possible a nice bead along the bottom of the small one Stick it right on top There you go guys, we got some stairs. It was literally that easy. And I can still fit a space marine where his head is not gonna hit the roof. So, we're laughing. Looks good, pragmatic, like I was saying, we gotta make these pieces practical. So now, we're gonna go on to spackling. Right, it's time to make these look like actual terrain pieces. And like we've done on all the other pieces in this series, we're gonna use my dab dry decks spackling with the dry time indicator. I like this dry time indicator business. I used to use polyfilla for everything, but I kind of like this stuff now. I like the fact that it's pink and that it'll dry white because that actually saves me time, believe it or not, because I don't have to just wait and hope that it's dry. It'll actually show me when it's dry. If there's any pink left, I know it's not dry. When it's all white, then I can start throwing on my glue, my sand, all my other scenic stuff. So we're just gonna take your finger Grab a whole glob of this and just start going around. Now, much like on the trees and the other pieces, 
we're going to want to spackle in under up under the trees and of course we're going to want to cover the entire base of the terrain piece including the foam core edges here it's just like all the other pieces in this uh, set I am going to spray paint it with the espresso spray after all the sand and as it moves down. And by covering the foam board, as I've mentioned before, it will prevent it from melting from the spray paint because the accelerant in spray paint has a tendency to melt styrofoam. Now, one thing I will mention that's different than some of the other terrain pieces we've done in this series is that we're going to use this spackling to actually build up a mound into the bunker. So it will take a lot of spackle. Um, you can use other things like molding clay and, and things like that. Uh, in the past I've tried to use um, air dry clay for that purpose and it doesn't really work well for that. We will be using the air dry clay to create our sandbags, but uh, when you're using it in large amounts, it tends to crack and it will warp the piece. This stuff, however, dries beautifully, will not warp our uh, foam board, and in fact, by covering the foam board completely, we actually prevent it warping from the other materials we're going to use, like our PVA glue and stuff like that. We'll prevent all that, all that warping. So I'm just going to go around and cover it all. Now, one thing I do want to do also is we're going to spackle up the walls of this bunker. So I'll start on this side just to show you guys. Because right now they look like foam core and we want them to look like concrete. So more or less all I'm going to do is put a nice thin layer on all of the walls. And what I want to do is I want to work side to side like this. Because when they lay concrete they either use a, uh, a form or if they're doing it by hand they're going to trowel it on. Right? So. I kind of want to create the appearance that somebody has quickly troweled to this, just like that. So it sort of creates ridges along the wall. You can't really see in that light here. Uh, there we go. You can see it like put it on an angle like that. Basically, we've got lines going this way, and it looks like somebody just kind of like trying to make it look all nice. They're building it quick because they need to get into battle, right? And also going to cover the base like I say and we can even start building up now you may want to do a glob let it dry do another glob and build it up 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 until you get a nice hill there if you put it all on at once it might take a long time for it to dry and like I say the outside will dry quicker than the inside which might actually warp your foam board so the best thing to do is to do it in stages which is what I'm going to do um, but I'm also going to, at the same time, go around and cover all of the walls of this bunker, including the inside, with spackle. Okay? Every square inch of this piece, with the exception of, of course, the tree trunks, is going to get covered in spackle. So, rather than you guys watch me doing that, I'm just going to go around and do it, and I'll be right back at you once it's on and it's all dry, and we can go on to the next stage. Alright, so I've added the third layer of spackling, building up that mound there. And it's not quite entirely dry at this point, but that's okay because we still got a little, we gotta wait a little while for this to dry, but that's okay because we're gonna be moving on to the air dry clay now, which is also gonna take a while to dry. So we might as well do that step now while I'm still waiting for this and save myself a little bit of time. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make some quick and easy sandbags. I've got here some air dry clay, I got it at the Dollarama. Um, beautiful stuff, you can mold it amazingly and it dries nice and hard. Um, now, all I'm doing, I might actually want to take my ring off because this stuff can get messy. So all I'm going to do here is basically just roll it into a snake. It's that easy. I'm just going to roll it into a long snake. Now as you see here, I've switched my, I've flipped my cutting mat over because the other side of course is covered in paint and sand and what have you. And we need a clean surface for this unless you want sand all, you know, rolled up in your clay. So I'm just going to roll a nice skinny snake, try and get it as consistent as possible. If it gets inconsistent, just flip it over again and then roll it back out again. It's really not complicated. There we go, just like kindergarten class. And basically all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my snake, and I've got here two lines drawn out of my cutting mat, and they're about a centimeter apart. And all I'm going to do here is take my snake, and just kind of 
mold it in and push it down with my thumb so that it's about a centimeter thick. Just flatten it down a little bit. If it gets a little skinnier in spots, you can always just like fudge it a bit with your fingers like this, how I'm like pinching it in from either side. If you have to, take it back off, roll it back again. It may take a few tries, guys. It's okay. We've got time. And more or less, I want to create a bunch of flat, sort of, somewhat cylindrical, but flat squares. Now, the reason I've done the one centimeter line is just to make them consistent. So there we go. Um, like I said, go along and flatten it down. Well, it starts to get a little messed up, and like I said, you just push it back in, try and stay within those lines. Perfect. And boom, that's going to be our sandbags. So the next step, I'll move it a bit for you. The next step, I'm just going to take my knife and my ruler. Now, I've decided beforehand that I wanted all of my sandbags to be in two centimeter pieces, like two centimeters long by one centimeter. So I'm just going to cut off my rough end because obviously, you know, you don't want a circular end on the sandbags, you want flat corners. And I'm just going to go along my ruler every two centimeters and make a cut. Let's go to Rome. And the end is a little bit short, so I'll just take that piece out and it won't be used right now. Now all we're going to do is pick each one of these up and just kind of square it off a bit with our hands. And that's a sandbag. So I'm going to grab all of these and like I say, just give them that one last little shape and then we'll get to putting them on. So now I'll show you guys quickly just with the ones that I just made with that snake, kind of what the concept is here. And then I'm just going to off camera go ahead and put sandbags all around the bunker around this piece. So this specific terrain piece I have here, I'm doing at the same time. It's not the bunker piece, but it is one that's going to get many sandbags throughout it. It's going to be like an artillery emplacement. So basically, now that you've got your nice shape here, your nice shaped sandbags, uh, the fact that they are a little irregular actually adds to the realism that they're not perfect shapes. And basically I'm just stacking them. Now you want to give them a little tiny push so that they do stick. They might not stick to the spackle because the spackle is kind of powdery. And as these dry and harden, you'll actually find that they will not stick that well to each other or to the spackle. And I'll show you afterwards what we're going to do about that. But for right now, we're just going to kind of create a sandbag formation with them. There, create a nice little wall. And like I say, you can give them a little tiny push. They tend to stick better to each other than they do to the spackle template. But again, we're going to combat that. There we go. Just keep building them up like this. And more or less, that's all we're going to do all the way around these pieces. I'm going to make a bunch of these snakes. I'm going to chop them up. And we're going to create little sandbag walls just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of them. And then I'll show you the next step just to secure them in and make sure that they don't go anywhere. So now that I've got all my sandbags built and on, basically what I've noticed about the air dry clay is that it doesn't adhere very well um, to either the spackle or to the other blocks. If you were using something like Milliput or green stuff, it would be much stickier and you'll uh, be able to adhere them to each other just under their own stickiness. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have to do an extra step. Now, of course, green stuff and millet putt and all those things are a lot more expensive than just some dollar store air dry pottery clay. So, we're just going to have to do one more step. So here I've got a bottle of PVA glue and rubbing alcohol. You can use PVA glue and water. I personally like the rubbing alcohol just because it flows much easier. And all I'm going to do now, I could paint these with PVA glue. But in doing so, I actually risk knocking over the stack. If you see here, it's got a little bit of movement to it. And that's the point of this stage, is just to prevent that. So if I try and paint that with a paintbrush, I'm just going to end up knocking them all out of place. And I just made these nice formations, so why would I want to ruin them? So, to prevent that, I'm basically just going to spray them with some glue. Make sure to get them nice and soaked. And I'm not shooting. There we go. Cover the sandbags in this stuff. And then basically I'm just going to take some paper towel and mop up the mess. I mean, it's okay if a little bit of it runs off onto the base of the terrain, but we don't want too much all over our workbench, right? I mean, 
number one, when this finally dries, the piece will end up stuck to our workbench, but number two, do we really want that big of a mess? No, we don't, right? So, just take a little paper towel, just be careful not to stick it directly to the sand beds, just make sure to only be softening up the area around it. And there you go, that's basically it. And because of the lack of surface tension on the alcohol, it actually filtered through between them uh, to the other side of the sandbags very easily, so that's great. So then I can just go on to the next one. sandbags so we'll just let everything dry all right so off camera basically I just PVA glued all the sand on on all the ground areas here I even put a little bit on the top of the bunker much like we did on the other bunker um, which you guys saw in the blog as well as the beginning of this video so my next step is to base coat everything now that I've got my sort of primer espresso brown on there I'm going to base coat the three different colors that I have on here and then we're going to go on to washes and stuff. So, for the sandbags, I'm using this Crafter Acrylic uh, Tan, I believe is the actual color. That's how I'm going to base coat those. Just like you guys saw in the tree videos, I'm going to paint the trees cinnamon brown as a nice base coat. And then the bunker itself, the concrete, is going to be this Westport Gray. Uh, this one I'm actually going to dry brush on first. Whereas the other two, I'm just going to paint straight on. So, let's do it. Third verse. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. I'm very excited. We'll see all the sides just like that show you like on HBO And if we're leaving, leaving tonight, tonight I'll be right behind Oh no Just like that show you like on HBO And if we're leaving tonight I'll be right behind Oh no Let's go to Rome Let's go to Rome We'll see all the sights Just like that show you like on HBO And if we're leaving stages of or all the other terrain pieces I should say in this series is our terrain washes. So this is just some black craft paint um, mixed in with some water, about two thirds water, one third craft paint. And I'm just gonna take my big brush and I'm just gonna black wash all everything. The sandbags, the walls, the trees, all of it. Everything I just base coated, I'm gonna give a black wash. Let's go to Rome. 
you'll see all the sides just like that show you like on HBO. And if we're leaving tonight, I'll be right behind. Oh no. All right, so now that we've got our black wash on there and it's pretty much dry, we're just going to take our green wash, the same way we did on the trees earlier in this drain series. And I'm just going to take my uh, green wash here that I've made out of my craft paint and water. And I'm really just going to focus on the lower areas next to the dirt. And this just adds another layer to it. it kind of creates sort of that mold, mildew sort of look, water damage along the bottom here. And I'm kind of being haphazard with it. Just kind of getting it all around the bottom. Same thing on the sandbags. I want to make sure there's a nice green wash around the bottom couple rows. Just on the bottom couple rows. Don't worry guys if it runs all the way off the template, that's fine. And I'm going to do the same thing of course on the trees. Like I say if it runs all over the template, no problem. And I'm just going to go around and do this all the way around. are dry we're going to before we go on to painting the dirt itself we're going to dry brush all these colors back up to their original color you know we've done all our black wash to give it shading we've done all our green wash to give it some character now we're going to bring them back up to their original colors and for that we're just going to do a nice steady dry brush so let's get into it let's go to Rome. let's go to Rome. We'll see all the sides just like that show you like on HBO And if we're leaving tonight, I'll be right behind Oh no Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Oh, I'm very excited. We'll see all the sights just like that show you like on HBO. And if we're leaving, leaving tonight, tonight, I'll be right behind. Oh no. Show you like 
Rock on HBO If we're leaving Leave tonight Tonight I'll be right behind Oh no dry brush back on. I'm just going to take my satin espresso. This time it's a can of paint. This is exactly the same color as the spray paint that I originally used. And I'm just going to go around in all the areas like here. Um, obviously you can see back here. You can on this one where all the color from the sandbags got on the dirt. Same with the trees and the concrete. I'm just going to touch it up to get that nice deep brown again. Sweet, so now we've done all our touch-ups, and just like all the other pieces in this terrain series that we've been doing, I am going to dry brush all of the espresso areas with this yellow oxide. Third first. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Let's go to Rome. Oh, I'm very excited. We'll see all the sights just like that show you like on. HBO If we're leaving Leave tonight, tonight I'll be right behind Oh no pieces I've got here my galvanized metal which is basically the bleach bone uh, and just like before I'm gonna take my gigantic dry brush and dry brush the entire piece trees concrete sandbags everything the ground the entire piece gets this dry brush so let's do it let's go to Rome let's go to Rome we'll see all the sides just like that show you like on HBO If we're leaving tonight I'll be right behind Oh no Let's go to 
We'll see all the sides just like that Show you like on HBO And if we're leaving tonight I'll be right behind Oh no on these guys just like we've done on all the other pieces it just adds a nice final highlight blends all the colors together and unifies it with all the other pieces we've created in this series now what I'm gonna do off camera is I'm just gonna add the ground foliage and of course the big canopy leaves on the trees just like we did in the tree video if you guys haven't seen that please check that out right there um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera because it's a lengthy process and you guys have already seen it so I don't want to waste your time but uh, we'll check those out when they're finished. There they are, everyone. Our sweet sandbag emplacement. Sorry about the bottle of paint there. I'm just, uh, what, the one leaf is still drying a little bit, so I just needed it to prop it up. That's okay. Once that epoxy's dry, it'll be good. I just sprayed the uh, clump foliage with the glue and alcohol mixture, as I showed you guys in the trees video. And there we go. We've got a sweet bunker with some sandbag emplacements. And then another artillery emplacement over here. Looking mighty sweet, if I do say so myself. The original bunker, the prototype for the entire table, with all the tree pieces. This is going to be a sweet jungle. So I hope you all enjoyed that tutorial on how to make the bunker and sandbags. Uh, this is the fourth in our table series. Uh, the final one that you guys will get for free. If you want to see the fifth one on how I'm building the swamp piece to complete this table, then you're going to have to go to the description below, click on our Patreon link, become a patron. It's super easy. For simply a dollar a video, so the normal Tuesday and Thursday releases that we put out, um, you get a whole bunch of bonus content. You get the end of these playlists as we release them, whether they be campaigns or terrain tutorials such as this one. Any series that we do, generally, there's a, at least the last one, maybe a couple in there, that we give to the patrons only, just as a thank you for contributing to what we do at Encounter Wargaming. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this terrain series. Uh, I love making terrain, and I hope my customer is very happy with this specific commission. Uh, there'll be plenty of terrain tutorials in the future, guys, so make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell next to it and the notifications so that you will be notified when my terrain tutorials come out, when our battle reports, unboxings, tactical videos, podcasts, etc. all come out, you will be notified. Plus, it helps us get up the search engines a little bit. So, all that being said, please check out our Patreon account if you want to see the last video in this series. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you at our next encounter. And like a monkey in